Joel chapter 17, verses 1 to 16. The Philistines now mustered their army for battle and camped between Sokar in Judah and Azekah in Ephas Dummim. Saul countered by gathering his Israelite troops near the valley of Elah. So the troops, so the Philistines and Israelites faced each other on opposite hills with the valley in between them. Then Goliath, a Philistine champion from Gath, came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and his bronze coated mail weighed 125 pounds. He also wore bronze leg armour and he carried a bronze javelin on his shoulder. The shaft of his spear was as heavy and thick as a weaver's beam, tipped with an iron spearhead that weighed 15 pounds. His armour bearer walked ahead of him carrying a shield. Goliath stood and shouted a taunt across to the Israelites. Why are you all coming out to fight? He called. I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. When Saul and the Israelites heard this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Now David was the son of a man named Jesse, an Ephrathite from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Jesse was an old man at that time, and he had eight sons. Jesse's three oldest sons, Eliab, Abimadab, and Shimei, already had already joined Saul's army to fight the Philistines. David was the youngest son. David's three oldest brothers stayed with Saul's army. But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. For 40 days, every morning and evening, the Philistine champion strutted in front of the Israelite army. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The men asked. He comes out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the man's entire family will be exempted from paying taxes. David asked the soldiers standing nearby, What will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it too to this pagan Philistine, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armour, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from the stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come and move a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. David replied to the flying Philistine, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come.
come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give it, give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's back and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Okay, so Andy's going to come and talk to us today. The theme today is courage. Oh yeah, sorry, just before he does talk. Children, if you'd like to go to the back there where Shirley's waiting for your power station recharge, that's lovely. Can we just pray for Andrew as well whilst the children are going over in that direction? Okay. So Father God, we just um, would commit this time now into your hands. We ask that you would um, give Andrew your words to say, that you would speak to him so and through him. And that each one of us would hear you speak directly to our hearts, no matter our age. Um, help us to take on board what it is that you have to say to us today, because we know that you have things to say to us. Um, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, can we throw it? So, thank you, David, for turning up this week. We actually were a bit concerned last week because. Um, we haven't had to get hold of you. Um, I hope you're camping. Is that right last week? Yeah. Was it okay? okay. A bit hot? Yes. Well done for coming, though. It's great to have you with us. So, another superhero. So, David is our superhero this week. And I'm going to, I love telling stories. So, can I just like tell a story? And then we'll pull something out of it. Is that okay? You happy with that? Yeah. We're going to have a story of David and Goliath. Just a quick test. Anyone know how long ago it was when it happened? It's a true story. It's not like Superman or lots of stuff. This is a proper true, true story. So anyone knows when the story of David and Goliath happened? Okay, let's make it easy. When was Goliath born? What year? Sometime BC. Sometime BC? Absolutely. Come on, any idea? Right, it was... Say again? 3,000 years ago. Paul's eye. How did you do that? You're only 50 years out. It was 1050 BC, I think it was. Uh, that's the that's the recorded time for uh, Goliath being born. So 1050 BC, what was going on in the UK? Just so we can get in context, what was happening in this country? Anybody know? Celts. What was happening in Grimstown? Because it's best to make it local, and then we understand it. I think it was just being vacated. It was like Bronze Age. Remember this Bronze Age? Somewhere around there. So we're talking about the Bronze Age. It's a true story that really, really happened in real time, about 3,000 years ago. So the, sto the story starts off like this. We, we, we met, so it's King Saul, he's like the king. Yeah? Are we okay with that? So King Saul was the king. The children of Israel wanted a king, and God gave them King Saul. King Saul was going through a bit of a hard time. He was having horrible thoughts and things. So he used to get David to come in and play his harp for him. And he used to chill him out. Relax it, it was like mood music, they had mood lights and stuff, mood music he used to chill uh, King Saul out of it. That, that really kind of helped. And that brings us to the start of our story for today, which hopefully will advance. Is that going to work? Just the next one. Okay, so we said it's a real time, it's about 3,000 years, just a real place. This is a photograph of the real place where our story today took place. It was in a valley called Elah, and you can see a hill in the distance and a hill close up to us. So what was happening at this time was the Philistines decided to take on the children of Israel. So the Philistines gathered on one hill, the children of Israel on the other side, 
I see they were camping, and they were starting having a face off. That's how it used to happen. So there they were, they settled in, they were having a face off. And what used to happen back then, rather than the diplomacy that we go through now, they used to get the biggest, hardest bloke out, set him at the front, take on a challenge, and they would try and have a bit of a fight. It was a bit more, I guess, economical with your, you know, with your army, you lost less people if you could just have two out of a fight. And that's exactly what happened in this story. So, we start at the face-off. So here we go. There they are across this valley. The person that the first time stand out is a guy called Goliath. He's a big lad, he's bigger than me, nine foot tall, depends on where you read, somewhere else is six foot nine, but probably somewhere in the region of nine feet. He was a very, very big, very strong guy. And he came out all tooled up. He'd got his sheaves on, the greaves they call them, like bronze protections on his, on his calves, he'd got a massive chain mail on him, made him lots of plates, he'd got his, his sword, he'd got everything. And he came out, and I want you to imagine it, so let's just imagine it. There he is, he comes out, this guy, nine foot tall, glinting in the sun, and he looks a really scary sight. He looks really, really scary. And he comes out and he starts laying into the children of Israel. And this is what he says. He says, I, he says this, um, he stood there and he shouted, why do why you come to me? Um, am I not a Philistine? And now you're not a servant of sword. To choose a man and come and fight me. If I overcome you, you're going to be our servants. If your guy overcomes me, we'll be your servants. And he started a war of attrition. Every day he came out with a psychological intimidation. He was really trying to wind up the children of Israel and Israel. So every time he came out, they lined up. It's really weird how they used to fight battles. It said they used to line up in the morning, they used to take up the battle lines, they used to do a bit of a at each other. That's how it used to go. A bit of saber, a bit of drum banging, and then they'd have a bit of a verbal, a verbal thing going on. And Goliath came out every day for 40 years. 40 days ago, and gave, gave, them, gave them the intimidation. And while this was going on, David's dad, Jesse, came to David and he said, look, I want you to do something for me. Your older three brothers, there's eight of them, the older three are out there fighting. I want you to take some, some food out to them, some bread and some cheese and some various other bits and pieces. I want you to take it out and I want you to come back with a bit of assurance for me. Because dad was obviously getting a bit twitchy and he wanted to know that everything was okay. So he says, go off. And do that. So David, David packed up, got up really early in the morning, uh, and off he went. And, and David arrived just at the point in the morning where the soldiers are getting up, they're taking up the lines, they're doing the saber rap, and they're doing the chanting business, and they're really going for it. I want you to think of the All Blacks doing a hacker. <laughs> That's really what was going on. It was a full on hacker that was going on. If you've ever seen it, I watched it this morning just to get myself in the mix. It's really intimidating. And that's only with a few blokes. Can you imagine it with an entire army doing the hacking? And that's what they did. David arrived just while this was going on. He gave the supplies to the guy who was in charge of supplies, and he went out to the front to meet his brothers. Now, this is where we carry on with the story. He sees Goliath coming out. Goliath does his usual thing. And David says, what's going to be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised, uncircumcised Philistine that she should defile the armies of the living God? The Israelites were terrified. David, as you can see, is quite a confident lad, rocked up, starts leaning into the army, saying, what are you doing? You've got God on your side. Why are you packing up, running off home when you've got God? This guy, God will defeat. And you can imagine the banter that starts going on, can't you? And, and the gossip that's going around the camp. And eventually, he gets back to King Saul. And Saul says, okay, let's get this guy in. He seems to be a bit courageous. So Saul gets, gets him in, and he sits down and has a chat. So we join Saul while he's having a chat with David. Just picture this, you're in the tent. A bit of hummus, a bit of pizza bread, but dipping it in, having a little chat. And Saul looks at David, I don't know why he doesn't seem to recognise him, because he should have done, because he used to play the, the harp to him to chill him out. He doesn't seem to recognise him. Saul calls him in, and he says, So you think you can take this guy on? So what David does, David does, he gives him a quick bio, like we all do when you buy for a club, you give a bio. So that's exactly what he does. He says to Saul, 
Look, God's in charge. I killed a bear. I killed a lion, I think it was. Did it with my bare hands when they tried to take my dad's goats and sheep. Pulled it out of the mouth and I killed them and that was it. And he said, look, I can take this guy on. And I love this, right? So David turns to Saul, who's the king, and gives him a pet talk. And this is what he says to him. He says this, let no one lose heart on account of the suicide. Your servant will go and fight him. Can you imagine that? There's David, this little shepherd boy, he's rocked up. He's giving the king a pet talk, saying, come on, don't lose heart, it's going to be okay. So Saul turns to him and he says, you're just a little lad. You know, you know, this guy's been a fighting man from his youth. He knows how to fight. He's probably killed loads of people. And he eventually manages to persuade, to persuade Saul and says, okay, go and God be with you. And Saul thinks, I'm going to go about and embrace it. So he gives David his armor and he sticks it on him. And I can just imagine David thinking, you know, it's like when you get close to the fit, right? And you've got to go to some posh event. I can imagine it was like this. It's just like, this is really not working for me. I'm not going to be able to do it. I can't move. I'm not going to be able to run. And he says to Saul, look, thanks, but no thanks. And so what David does, he goes down to a stream and he gets five stones. Puts them in his pouch. And the usual packet is taking place. The face-off is taking place. Goliath comes out. He sees David. Do you ever watch boxing? You know when that has a weight in And do you know the thing where I don't know if see it, but they put the foreheads together and do the little thing? And that breathing into the faces and winding each other up? This is what's going on here, except the difference in height, so the forehead thing is not really working for me. <laughs> so, so Goliath says this, he looks over and, and he does a face off. So he launches. He looked over at David. He despised him. He said to David, Am I a dog that you've come to me with sticks? And the Philistine, cursed by David, cursed David by his God, says, Come here, and I'll give you flesh to the birds of the air. David listens to him. He thinks to himself, I'm going to do a bit of a longer speech. So this is David's speech back. So David says this, You come to me with a sword, a spear, a javelin. And this is the part for today's talk. I come to you, I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel. Who you have defied. This day the Lord will have you over to me. I will strike you down and cut off your head, and today I'll give your carcasses, uh, give the carcasses of the first times to the birds. And he goes on to say, All those gathered here will know that the Lord saves. So there's a massive face off going. David's saying, I've got God on my side. That's why David is full of courage. The Philistine here, he doesn't realise there's actually a big problem in being big. One of the big problems in being big is actually a fairly good target. That's quite obvious, isn't it? The bigger you are, the better target you are. And what I love what happens here, the event starts to happen. Goliath, just picture it, Goliath with all his armour on, glinting in the sun, so it starts to lumber towards David. What does David do? He actually runs towards Goliath. I mean, what do you think Goliath's doing at this point? This little lad running towards him. And while he's looking at him in amazement, he suddenly feels a bang in his top of his forehead and he falls down dead. David had done a preemptive strike from a distance at his weakest point. This guy was trusting in himself. He was full of pride. He was full of arrogance. It was all about him. For David, it was all about God. So David comes along, he has no armour on. So in that respect, he's vulnerable. He comes in humility, trusting in God, and has the most unbelievable courage that he manages to take the Goliath out with one step. No, no, I five, he only needed the one, took him out with the one step. So the message from this story is this. Goliath trusted his armour, David trusted in God. Goliath was proud and arrogant, uh, yes, please. and um, David was humble. So these are our lessons for today. So it's all about courage. So David was courageous. Now the first one. So what David did is he trusted in God. So if you listen to the face of David is saying God is in charge, God is going to do this. Goliath said, I'm going to do it. And the next one. So two things I want us to pick up on today. That we trust in God, he gives us the courage, but we've got to live according to his plans. He won't give us courage to do things we shouldn't be doing. Because God knows the best for each one of us. So give us courage to do what is right. I can just have a verse as well. 
Okay, so this is our verse for today. This is from Joshua chapter 1, 8 and 9. And there's really important things in there. So what's been said here is study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and, and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So do what God wants us to do, yeah? And then it's trusting in God. He will give us that ability to trust in him. And just do the last slide, that would be great. So this is our challenge for the week. We've got the first one on. Okay, so meditate on God's word, let it sink into us, let it perfuse through us, then we know exactly what God wants us to do. The next one. Then we've got to obey. There's no point knowing it without obeying it. And the next one. Okay, and then we just got to keep reminding ourselves that God is with us wherever we go. Mm. So filling ourselves with God, God's word, knowing what his will is for us, and then doing what he wants us to do. But then we're going to have courage. We're just going to sing Waymaker now. I love this. It's just a great way just to wrap up this service. So God is our Waymaker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper, light in the darkness. Let's focus on God, recognising who he is, even when we don't feel it, he's working. Even when we can't see it, he's working. David acted in humility and he trusted God. And that's exactly what we've got to do. We come to God saying we can't do it. Give me the ability to do it. So let's stand up and we're going to see him waiting.